going on in this video, we're going to look at a monostable mode 555 timer that we're going to power with a lithium iron phosphate battery right here, a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So we got to make sure we have everything wired up correctly before we plug this in because the uh, circuitry, the board in here has no uh, protection. If we wire things wrong, the battery should be protected um, with internal BMS if uh, you uh, do something wrong. but. Uh, don't push it for no reason. So this is what the monostable mode 555 timer does. When I press the button, the output goes high for a period of time set by that capacitor and that resistor right there. And um, that's the unstable state. The uh, stable state right here is when the output is low and I wire it up so a blue LED lights up when the output's low. It's gonna stay low until I force it to go high for a brief period of time again. So now to begin with we want to make it so that each rail has the same power because uh, this has positive on uh, both sides and negative. There'll be a capacitor going to negative there on both sides. So we want to make sure they have the same power and I just took a couple of these breadboard uh, jumpers there, wires on both ends and I squeezed the uh, connecting part of this onto the other end there. Uh, pretty simple just use pliers. Make sure that goes to positive be uh, very careful and uh, again the battery will fry the breadboard and stuff and components if we uh, do something wrong so I'm gonna work on protection circuitry later so now when it comes to the 555 timer you always have to uh, power it connect it to the uh, power source so VCC is the uh, positive supply right there that's pin 8 so it goes 1 2 3 4 and then you jump across 5 6 7 8 so positive supply to 8 and then negative supply to pin number one right there top left uh, pin now we have this other uh, jumper going directly to the positive supply there for pin number four this is the reset pin and it's waiting for close to uh, zero volts before it does something so all we're doing is telling it not to do anything because we have a much higher voltage than zero volts now we come to the trigger pin, pin number two right there. Second one, we got a jumper coming down to the bottom of the switch. Um, so that's always connected down there. Those two up there are always connected. They're going to the negative supply. When I press the button, top and bottom uh, connects. So you can see that connection right there. Pin number two is also waiting for a low input, uh, less than one third of the supply voltage. And uh, so if we just leave it uh, floating, it's going to pick up stray voltages in the air and uh, we'll get things happening that we don't want to happen. So I'm going to take a 100,000 ohm resistor. Value doesn't uh, really matter. Just remember when you close the switch, any current going through the resistor is uh, just wasted uh, going to ground. Uh, no current goes in or out of the input. Uh, same with uh, pin 4. And uh, so yeah, we just go directly to the positive supply right there. So it holds the voltage high if we have a charger applied to the uh, battery and it's uh, pretty close to fully charged, it could be up to 14.6 volts. If there's no uh, charger applied, we just have the battery that's fully charged just sitting there. It might be 13.6 volts. It might drift down a little bit over time, um, even while it's just sitting there, but uh, we could have uh, that much voltage. So we're working with fairly high voltage. So I think 100K is all right right here. A lot of times you'll see a 10K resistor full pull-up resistor, 10,000 ohms. I'm using 100,000 ohms. And by the way, when you're using an integrated circuit and uh, many other components, make sure you check the data sheet for the limitations of the component. So the 555 timer, I believe it's uh, 15 volts or less recommended, um, down to 4.5 volts. And uh, so we're safe even while we're charging this with an absolute maximum of, I uh, believe, 18 uh, volts. So I'm using an NE555 timer here. If there's other letters in front of it, they might have different limitations. Um, but in case, let's get back to uh, building the circuit. So we have uh, first uh, a little jumper between pin 6 and pin 7. So pin 6 is monitoring the voltage. It's waiting for two-thirds of the supply voltage which means the capacitor charge it. Pin seven is the discharge pin. So um, when the output is low, uh, pin seven here is connected directly to ground. It discharges the capacitor. So that will connect directly to ground. We have to make sure we limit uh, current enough um, for when it's connected directly to ground. I'm using a high value uh, resistor here because I'm using a fairly low value capacitor uh, right there. So let me make sure I have the right one. Okay, down here. And um, so 470,000 
ohms of resistance. Oh, that's right, I connected to that jumper right there. Because that goes directly to the positive supply right there. So you could either jump across there or uh, go directly to uh, jump across right there or uh, go directly to where that jumper is. Doesn't matter, it's the same uh, connection. And then uh, we have the capacitor. So that allows uh, positive to come um, when the output's low, just go to ground. Um, but then we got the jumper there uh, going to pin six. That's where we're gonna put a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor. So to adjust the timing, if we want a longer period of time, we could use a larger value uh, capacitor and uh, you could use a larger value resistor as well. Um, but uh, this is kind of a high value. At some point it might get too high or things don't work out. Um, better use a higher uh, value capacitor. But in case you can go higher values for a longer uh, period of time where the output is high, that's after you press the button. So you press the button, the uh, capacitor starts charging and the output goes high. When the capacitor gets two thirds of the supply voltage, then pin six senses that. It sets the output back low and uh, the capacitor instantly discharges through pin seven. Pin six here is called the uh, threshold pin, by the way. And also make sure the capacitor is in the right direction. This is the negative side of the capacitor. It's polarized. Some capacitors are not uh, polarized, but if it's in a can like this, it probably is. There's a gray band right there. I know it's not really showing up. Maybe if I adjust the light and uh, that's the negative side. Where the longer lead is, if you haven't trimmed them, that's the uh, more positive side right there. So we got uh, that done. Now let's come to our load. So we wired up uh, the circuit here completely, but we would have to measure the voltage to get a sense of when the output is high and low. So we're gonna use a couple LEDs as uh, indicators. So the blue LED lights up when the output's low. That's because that side is uh, more positive. Anode, short lead cathode, uh, current will flow through when it connects to ground. And these 555 timers connect to ground pretty well. So one thing I could do, the longer lead is the anode, uh, shorter lead the cathode, and I believe it's the cathode. It's uh, shaved on some LEDs. So what I could do, if I want to do a safe space, is uh, connect the long lead anode there, short lead cathode up there, and that slid in pretty easy. Um, some of these holes don't uh, like LEDs. Um, but uh, usually I have the anode above the cathode. A lot of times it's, uh, easy to think of positive working your way down, positive working your way to the left, um, but not always, be aware of that. Um, but uh, to make things less confusing, I just put a jumper up there to the positive supply, long lead anode there, short lead cathode there. If we wire it up, everything looks like it worked properly, but that's not uh, lighting up. Maybe you put it in backwards, that's common to do. Now, we're gonna take a 2200 ohm uh, resistor. If we have a charger applied to this battery, we could be up to 14.6 volts. Even without a charger, we could be up to 13.6 volts. Um, generally, you discharge to about 12 volts. If you really want to squeeze out all the power you can out of the battery, you could go to uh, 10 volts. Um, but in uh, any case, uh, we're dealing with uh, relatively high voltage, and uh, the blue LED gets pretty bright even at low current. Um, so uh, 2,200 ohms. The resistor won't overheat. It might overheat with 1,000 ohms. And um, so... Uh, we'll go with the higher value. We don't need uh, much current. So I got uh, that resistor there, 2200. Gonna go to the output and then to the cathode, the short lead of the resistor right there. And of course I misspoke in the last scene, the cathode is the short lead of the LED, not the resistor. So now we got the uh, red LED and we wanna wire it up so when the output is high, connected to the positive supply, as good as it can, it'll probably fall about a volt short of the positive supply. It uh, doesn't go through transistors as easily from the positive supply in the 555 timer. Um, but in any case, we want uh, the red LED to light up when the output is high. And uh, so first, let's grab the LED. I got another jumper down here going to ground again. So we got the long lead, the anode needs to be more positive, short lead, the cathode, needs to be more negative for it to light up and also, they uh, like shaved a little part of the ridge there. It's uh, flat. And um, some of these holes don't uh, care for the LED, but it slipped in pretty good. Um, uh, earlier I was having trouble uh, getting them in. Uh, this is a cheap board. Don't force uh, pins into these. Um, they damage a lot easier than a higher quality board. And uh, so I got uh, this resistor. I'll go to the output again, pin three. Doesn't really matter where I connect. Uh, mostly I just want you to be able to see where I am uh, connecting uh, right there. And again, this is a cheap board. These resistors, these particular ones that I bought, the leads are thinner than uh, the average resistor that you buy, but uh, I got them for cheaper. So I think it was worth it. Um, so 
um, if they're not connecting to uh, the cheap board here, the uh, higher quality boards squeeze the leads better. You can uh, shove them into the uh, same hole as another component and then it will make uh, better uh, contact. So we're gonna do that there. Uh, by the way, so I got a 470 ohm resistor, another 470 ohm resistor, they are in series. That will give this LED about a thousand ohms of protection right there. As I said before, especially if we have a charger applied, 14.6 volts, this does drop like a volt though, so we got more protection. Um, but in case, we're gonna say like uh, 15 volts across a thousand ohms protecting an LED, if it was just one resistor, would uh, create a lot of heat in that one resistor. These are quarter watt resistors. So when we put them in series, they will uh, split up that uh, voltage in half. Remember the LED drops about two volts, the rest of the voltage goes across the resistance. Um, so two equal value resistors in series, they'll take half of that voltage. So when the same current's flowing through them as uh, one resistor, if it was a thousand ohm resistor, um, each one of these will get about as hot as, or about half as hot as that lone resistor would. All right, so we're all done. I'm very uh, certain I wired everything uh, properly. Again, we're using lithium iron phosphate battery right here. It can provide a lot of uh, current as far as this circuit is concerned here, even though they're, these are small LIFEPO uh, batteries. And uh, LIFEPO is short for lithium iron phosphate. And um, so you wanna definitely make sure that you have it wired up uh, correctly. Worst thing you could do, especially for the board, is uh, have positive and negative directly connected together. Wherever it is, a lot of current's gonna flow thanks to this battery. Uh, you're gonna melt the board. Something might even uh, catch fire. Probably won't damage the battery because it has protection circuitry, but again, it's best to not abuse uh, lithium batteries ever if you can help it. So output is high when uh, we first applied uh, power right there. And it's gonna go low after the timing. There we go. And uh, so now it's low. It is in its uh, stable state. And uh, until I press the button again. So it's gonna stay low until I press the button. Oh, by the way, if I hold the uh, button, then the output's gonna stay high for as long as I hold the uh, button until I release it. But otherwise, as long as you let it go before the timing is done, then the timing's gonna set when the output goes low. So now we're done. I put the uh, caps back on the uh, battery we were using and we will zoom in. One of the things I liked about this battery, by the way, I generally put links to stuff I use in my videos down below. It may just be on my Amazon shop page, but uh, that's an affiliate uh, page. If you uh, click one of the products and browse it before you make any purchase, you don't have to buy the thing that I link, um, but uh, review other stuff, I'll get a small percentage of that at no extra cost to you. Uh, and it costs the same whether you use that link or not. But in uh, any case, I like this battery because it was priced fairly low. And also I like that it has the specifications uh, written on it. So it's got the model number there. You can go uh, look up the uh, manufacturer's uh, specifications to online if you really want to. But again, charge voltage could be up to 14.6 volts. Depends on what charger you're using. Um, but that's pretty common. So if you have a circuit uh, applied to that while it's charging, the circuit's gonna see that voltage too. So that's why for these videos, um, I use that voltage as the highest voltage you might uh, run into. And as you can see, the battery can provide about seven amps of uh, current. Uh, higher quality breadboards like these, I think might be able to handle five amps. These lower quality ones, may maybe like an amp or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this uh, jumper is, uh, a little wire there as is that wire you shouldn't even put like an amp you know I, I think you'll be okay with an amp through them but probably like half an amp or less uh, would be recommended to keep them from uh, overheating i think the switch might be able to handle like five amps or something so um we would probably most definitely fry a whole bunch of stuff if the battery provided as much current as it can it may even damage the battery if the protection circuitry doesn't work properly or something. Um, so it's best just to design it to begin with uh, where hopefully nothing will ever go wrong. So this was a long video, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you click like and subscribe and stuff. Check out all the links down below please, that would help out a lot. But otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. That was what helped the most that you watched it.